of the world. I am speaking for the International Space Order in the first worldwide radio and telecast in history. At this moment, over two billion people in every part of the world are focusing their attention on this program. Every nation of the Earth, in a magnificent effort, is contributing of its people and resources in an attempt to reach the moon and proclaim it international territory. The rocket ship Lunar Eagle Number 1 represents the culminating achievement of the world's leading scientists. The men and women who will fly her have been handpicked from the world's leading specialists. They include Dr. Eric Heinrich, who personally designed and supervised the construction of this rocket ship. As Dr. Heinrich is the oldest member of the crew, so Rod Murdoch is the youngest. He holds a doctor's degree in mathematics at the age of 19. Dr. Selim Hamid from Turkey is an expert on space medicine. Selected to work with him is Dr. Sigrid Bromark from Sweden, physician and physicist. From France, Etienne Martel, engineer and technician. Sir William Rochester, noted British geophysicist. Tokyo-born Dr. Hideko Murata will be acting as astrophotographer and pharmacist. Russia is represented by Dr. Fyodor Orlov, geologist and mapmaker. From Nigeria, the chief navigator, the great astronomer, Asmara Makanen. From Israel, Polish-born Dr. David Ruskin. This aeronautic engineer will serve as the official recorder of this expedition. The Brazilian Dr. Luis Vargas, the ship's first pilot, will also be in charge of communications. The leader of this gigantic undertaking is John Anderson of the United States, who has dedicated his life to man's conquest of space. His three previous orbital flights have made him world famous. Because of his all-around experience, he was the unanimous choice of the International Space Order to helm this project. Within the next few minutes, we expect to make world-shattering history. The dual-powered Lunar Eagle will take off with the liquid fuel method, and outside the Earth's atmosphere will convert to atomic power. When the moon's orbit is reached, by retro power, the first landing on the moon will be attempted. If all goes as planned, touchdown on lunar soil should be 27 hours from X minus zero. During the entire flight, Earth Control will try to keep in communication with the ship. This worldwide network will bring you bulletins on the flight and the news of the landing. God be with them.
This is Dr. David Ruskin reporting his first entry into the official log of the Lunar Eagle. We will attempt to report salient information as it occurs. It is now launch time, minus two minutes. Minus 27 seconds in counting. All recorders and oscillographs to fast. Vernier start. Gott sei Dank. How far have we come, Stargazer? 1,500 miles above Earth. Present speed, 16,000 miles per hour. Atmosphere content, 0. 0.0004. Three minutes from launch. Booster power off. Transfer to atomic power accomplished. On profile, gyro settings equal. Doctors Brumark and Hami proceed with medical checkup. Oh, I'm fine. See the doctor, Hami. Very well, Captain. I'll come back to you later. Looks as if old Earth is having quite a rainstorm back there. This is the 
first time I've seen a storm from the other end. Well, they may be getting soaked with rain back on Earth, but at least they are safe. We are quite dry, but going far into the unknown, from which we may never return. Do you have any doubt that we'll return? Do you? Me? Of course not. I never doubted it. One has to develop a bit of fatalism about all this. I never doubted it for a moment that we'll make it. Well, well, well. For the first time in my life, Earth looks good to me. Dr. Martel, don't you think we'll make it either? But of course. It's perfectly reasonable that we should make it. I trust the engines, I trust the ship. But what will happen will happen. That's right. Robbie, you next. Please, Martel, roll up your sleeve. Oh, all these unimportant details. I am in the best of health. Well, we just want to make sure. Good boy. I'll see you below. Good. I'll start on our pilot. I've heard a lot about that new dual magna camera. How does it work? Well, after taking motion pictures on magnetic tape, I can, with this button, choose any frame I wish for an instant still. Here, I'll show you. I'm just taking this picture of our receding Earth. You're all right. And when next we have some free time, I'll give you some pointers on using the camera. Okay. Physical condition of the entire group, excellent. Except for Heinrich, whose age is showing. Everyone acting artificially calm to cover up their real excitement about man's first trip to the moon. Dr. Ruskin? I'll take you first. Fine. Busy so soon, recording our trip? We're scarcely on our way. Well, I'm keeping the most accurate flight log possible. And that way, posterity will always remember man's first flight to the moon. The events you record in the next few days will be milestones in history. Oh, yes. What about Dr. Heinrich? How is he? Not very well. It's only natural, I suppose. He is the oldest. Don't say anything to anybody else. No ill effects, really. Such a brilliant man. If only someday I could be like him. Brilliant, as I hear. What brilliance? Young man, remember, who contributes most to interplanetary travel? Russia. What? Are you serious? But of course. Sputnik 1, Sputnik 2, Sputnik 8, 9, a few dogs, and our dog will survive these experiments. Gentlemen, gentlemen, we have much work ahead of us. My wife will start on the surface of the moon. I'm a geologist and the best map maker in the world. Yes. Poland is still on your Russian map. But of course, it has already been liberated. Don't get any ideas about liberating my country, Israel. Dr. Olaf, uh, your medical checkup, please. And your sugar. <laughs> ah, you lucky people. Nothing seems to worry you. Navigator to Captain. We're in an unusual magnetic field. ahead. How close? You're on a collision course. A collision course. Changing over to auto reaction pilot. Vargas, take over. Yeah. Captain the navigator, autopilot change course eight degrees to avoid meteors.
Oh, just some stray meteors. It's all right, Mimi. Adolfo, you still have eight lives left. Profile change completed. Back on original setting. Zami Chachona. It worked perfectly. After all, it was our invention. With a little help from our German scientists. Soothing and practical than water. Clean by ultrasound and massage by air spray jets. <laughs> when I get back to Stockholm, I'm gonna have one installed in my apartment. Me too, when I get back to Tokyo. Whoops, I'm sorry, ladies. Well, you could have knocked. Uh, well, we're not at the Waldorf, you know. Well, Mimi, Rodolfo. Some attic you've climbed into, isn't it? But don't worry. Your work's gonna start on the moon. They wanna see if procreation can take place up there. So, Mimi, maybe when we get back, you'll have a litter of moon kittens, hmm? John, we are direct on course to orbit over the crater of Menelaus. Another hour and 37 minutes, and we should begin retro procedure for landing. Approaching meteoric dust cloud. Impossible to avoid. Affirmative. Breakthrough alert. Signal condition red. Prepare to set up for penetration rockets. Outer door open. Ready to fire. Preset timing fuse to 1.55 minutes. 1.55. On setting, still ready. We'll use a five second countdown. Five and counting. Four, three, two, one, fire. Second setup, ready. No time, have to make it as is. All hands off metal surfaces. Interior could become electrically charged. Dr. Orloff, that was our invention. Old Mother Earth, from up here, she looks rather small and insignificant, doesn't she, Stargazer? Very small, John. Very insignificant. I wonder what they're doing down there. <laughs> Probably watching us. Well, I better get up those stairs and get ready for a reversal. Reversal accomplished without mishap. Landing in one hour and 32 minutes. And now, Roddy, we need the formula for our rate of deceleration for our landing on the moon. That'll be x over g minus 3, considering that the moon's gravitational pull is one-sixth of Earth. That's absolutely right. He's always right. Amazing, Rod.
course, the original calculation was determined 33 years ago by Bernauer in Vienna. Ironic, isn't it, that for all his brilliance, Bernauer could have been such a Nazi beast. Did you know he was directly responsible for the extermination of more than 100,000 of my people? He killed my mother, my father, my sisters, and my brothers. But Dr. Heinrich is... Rob, come over here, will you? We have a problem here. Listen, Rob. Reskin doesn't know that Dr. Heinrich's own father was Bernauer. Heinrich was so ashamed of what his father did that he changed his name. Don't say anything, Roddy. That should take care of it, shouldn't it? Good. They work so well together. Yes. Let's not rake up all that old muck again. This is the latest shot of our moon landing area, Captain. Captain Anderson to crew, strap down for landing. Altitude, 500 feet. 400. be praised. Praise the ship, not Allah. Lunar Eagle number one to Central Earth Control. Come in, Central Earth Control. Earth Control to Lunar Eagle one. Over. Lunar Eagle number one, Captain Anderson speaking. Reporting successful landing on moon. Time is calculated plus 37 minutes. Preparing now for first lunar disembarkation. Next scheduled contact with Central Earth Control at Oh, 200. Congratulations, Lunar Eagle One. Stand by for Secretary General of International Space Order. Thank God you made it, Captain. Speaking for all the peoples of the Earth, whom you and your crew represent, our heartiest congratulations for this first great step in the exploration of space. Godspeed in your work. <laughs> We are preparing to leave the Lunar Eagle. In a few minutes, man for the first time will set foot upon the moon. The excitement is great, but controlled because of its momentous importance. I am now switching over to my helmet microphone. Now I'm turning on my invisible electromagnetic ray screen, which forms a protective shield over our faces and I will continue my commentary through my micro tape recorder. Check everything with extreme care. Double check your oxygen supply. There's enough in each tank for a two hour stay up on the surface of the moon. Now, as you remember, you must develop an additional reflex action. Make sure your suit radio is in working order at all times. Marcel, while we are gone, keep all TV and radio channels open. Check. Also lower the equipment in the winch. Check. Equipment check, McConan. Anderson, the McConan radio check. Check. Vargas, you and Ruskin will carry our magnetic meteorite deflectors. Now remember, when we hit the surface of the moon, to establish a four-point perimeter at least 100 yards from the ship. Check. Check. Selim, you are carrying the air detector. Yes, check. Echo. Emergency equipment. Check. All right. Vargas and I hit the airlock first. 
No air detected, no sound. Soil seems to be pumice dust, two to three inches thick at this point. After touching lunar soil, we were bombarded by meteors. Our magnets were strong enough to protect us. The planting of this flag symbolizes the internationalization of the moon to prevent individual nations from any further dispute. Now we shall continue with the second part of our mission, scientific exploration.
constantly being bombarded by falling rocks caused by the explosion of meteors hitting the moon's surface. Vargas, stake out this area. Remember, if you go outside this area, you'll stay within the protection of the cliffs of rocks. Well, off, this is where you take charge. Everybody attend to their prearranged duties. If any unusual mineral deposits are discovered, please report them to me at once. Doctors Bromark and Hamid, you will search for signs of air and life. Various minerals and stones have been collected. Among them, we have found volcanic crystals and sharp coral-like formations, which appear translucent. Look at this. It's gold, isn't it? Yes, that's gold. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Seems to be something unusual under here. Clear these rocks away. Careful, you fools, careful, don't damage it. What is it, Dr. Olaf? I have never seen anything like it. Nor have I. Oh, it's beautiful. It's like fire, like liquid fire. We are the first people to set eyes on a stone like this. It's beautiful, but evil, evil and sharp, like the jewel of Medea. The Medea stone, very well named, very well named. I have named it. Of Conan. What is it? Are you listening for something? I feel something. There must be air.
Captain Anderson, I'd like to search deeper, please. There may be more precious gems like the Medea stone here. Can we have the explosion? Yes, but we must hurry. We've only got about an hour's supply of oxygen left. At once, then. What is it? Ship, please. I'll stay with him. Captain Anderson, Secret and Salim, they're missing. They're not with us. Well, then we'll have to search, but we must be quick because there's not much time. Look, they're footprints. There's air in this cave. There could be life. We've come to the end of the cave. There's a solid wall of ice. Oh, my God. 
everything lost. What a fool, what a foolish waste. Believe it or not, outside it's 202 degrees below zero. You'll return just in time. And this is only the beginning of the lunar night. Yes. Night here like day is equivalent to 15 days and nights upon the Earth. It will drop to approximately 250 below zero. <laughs> I'd rather be out there now than at the peak of the lunar day, when it's hotter than boiling water out there. The heavy lead in Dr. Rochester's boots contributed to his sinking into the pumice dust. These are the circumstances which contributed to the death of Dr. William Rochester. The first embarkation party returned to the Lunar Eagle because of diminishing oxygen supply and the necessity to normalize our bodily processes. Poor Bill. Such a tragic death for a man so dedicated. I know, we all feel terrible about it. Secret, sailor. Well, it's too cold to continue a prolonged search. Do you think they'll get back to the ship? If they're still alive, just keep praying. I have been. Despite the adverse circumstances, we are, according to plan, photographing various parts of our galaxy from which we hope to obtain a new perspective. Captain Anderson to entire personnel, please assemble on A deck. All contact with Earth control has been broken off. All contact with central Earth control has been broken off, as I've told you. We are in complete isolation. The magnetic receiver seems to be working perfectly. John. Try to make contact again. Lunar Eagle 1 to Central Earth Control. Our magnetic receiver is working. Do you hear us, Central Earth Control? Do you hear us, Central Earth Control? Look! There's something. What is it? Looks like hieroglyphics. It's not Egyptian, nor African. It looks like Oriental picture writing. Could it be Chinese? You don't say. It's incredible. Do you recognize it, Hideko? Is it something you understand? It's impossible. It can't be. You know what it is. Can you translate it for us, Hideko? I don't know. Well, I'll try. I speak for the great coordinator the moon. We advise and warn you. Return to Earth at once. You have done enough damage. Go on, go on. It's moving again. You have been bombarding us for years incessantly. Leave us in peace. We read your mind. We know your every thought. We cannot speak as you do. We communicate by thought waves. Fantastic. But how do they live? Where? We live in a great sealed city below. We are not enslaved by your earthly emotions, greed, lust, passions of conquest. We cannot allow you to stay here, for you would only contaminate our perfect form of harmony. Secret Salem, is their fate known? They are here. They say they are in love. We are studying this curious emotion. We find that love turns to evil. We will destroy them. You and your kind. Re remember, we have the power to immobilize you at will. Oh, this is impossible. It must be a hoax. These symbols could have been sent by an Earth power already secretly here on the moon. A power that wishes to scare us away. How do you feel about that? Why ask me? How should I know? I don't believe there are any moon people. Do you? I'm convinced it's possible. Someone could have made it all up to 
frighten us off. Ah, ridiculous. <laughs> Dr. Heinrich suffered from a heart attack. Father, why did you do it? How can I ever live down your crime? I hate the name of Bernau. I cannot go on being Heinrich Bernau any longer. What are you saying? What do you mean? I will be Erich Heinrich. Erich Heinrich. You are the son of Bernauer. The man who wiped out my entire family. Yes. Oh, my God. It haunted me all my life. I did everything humanly possible to make good for my father's crime. Can you understand? Can you still be my friend? Rest now. The same symbols. Translator, please, Adeko. Strangers from Earth, before you depart, we must have one thing. You will leave behind the two cats. Cats have a most unusual appeal for us, but unfortunately, we have none here on the moon. They interest us almost as much as the two human beings who joined us. Turn it off, Louis. You think it's wise to open those doors again for the two cats? Well, I think so. I'll go. I'll go with you. the surface of the moon at 6700. This decision was based on the warning which emanated from those mysterious symbols. Even though we were in doubt of the survival of Selim and Sigrid, we had to make a quick decision in order not to jeopardize our mission. Three hours and 10 minutes on flight. We're right on the button. We're just past a neutral line operating towards the Earth's gravitational pull. And there, no oxygen. Quick thinking, Louis. I think the dog should have the medal. That was a close one. Well, I better get up and relieve Ruskin. Well named, the Medea Stone. The oxygen fused it into fire when it came in contact with the gold. 
Let me fix it for you. Oh, it's not too bad. Thank you. Lunar Eagle 1 to Central Earth Control. Do you hear us, Central Earth Control? Earth Control to Lunar Eagle 1. We hear you. We hear you, Lunar Eagle 1. We have your position. Why did you leave the moon? We had an urgent departure. Please give us our position. Your position? Come in, Central Earth Control. We've lost you. We've lost you, Central Earth Control. Come in. Come in, Central Control. I don't understand it. We've lost Earth contact completely. Remember what the people on the moon said? They have the power to immobilize us at will. Well, don't say that. But they said it. And it could be true. See? Lie down, Dr. Heinrich. There's nothing you can do now. We're on our way back to Earth. I missed the takeoff. I missed it all. Lie oh, down, no. please. Please. Navigator to Captain. Media clusters directly ahead. Point three, four, point three. Check. Right. Point one. Zero minus XC. Try once. Okay, wait, wait. Point five. Point seven and, and five tenths. I hope. You did better than you ever did in any isolation booth. Isolation booth? I guess our invention didn't work so good this time. Your German scientists did not perfect it. He's absolutely right. You are brilliant, my boy. You're much better than I. You saved us all, including him. Me, I must still put my faith in the electronic brain. There is no substitute for such a human brain. Conan, report. Vargas, check radar. Cannot identify object. Nothing registers on radar. Check the mechanical equipment. All equipment okay. Anderson to entire personnel. Counter reversal accomplished. We are in orbit at 500 miles above Earth. Assemble on A deck, please. Hadeco, get the uh, TV camera ready to photograph Earth for us. Yes, Captain. Louis, check the radio again. Check. No, no, thank, thank you, thank you. I feel fine. Let me stand on my own two feet. See? I told you it's only a passing thing. John, I feel that I must advise you. There is something wrong, something unexplainable. I know, I know, McConan, but everything is working perfectly in the ship. I'm cold. Me too. Most unusual. That's what I wanted to tell you, John. Outside temperature reading is 245 degrees below and still falling. It's no wonder it's cold in here. It's 55 degrees. Vargas, check the heat. Check. Captain, quick! Vargas.
Why? Why, this thing is moving from the North Pole towards New York. Captain Anderson. I'm getting a reception, Captain Anderson. Good. It's a little blurred, but I think I can clear the picture. Well, that's some picture. Nothing's moving. Something must be jammed in the TV. Try New York. There is something wrong with it. You know, I checked carefully. The machine's in perfect order. Do you agree? I agree. By some scientific means, they, whoever they are, have found a way to freeze all molecular activity. Those whizzing noises. Yes. In other words, they have frozen the lower atmosphere by extracting all thermos particles. But how could that be possible? Sounds very simple. It is the principle of the hydrogen bomb in reverse. I agree with you. Through some superior device, they found a means of achieving a glacial phenomenon. Implosion bombs. That must have been that strange noise we heard. I somehow feel it's an earthly power. Gentlemen, let's make no mistake. Our situation is extremely serious. We are caught in orbit. In order to survive, we have to remain at our present altitude. How long? I don't know until we find the solution. Let's go to work. John, I'm getting London. Nothing like this has ever happened before. For the past 10 hours, the North American continent remains in an isolation of silence. No contact can be established by any means of communication with either Canada, the United States, or Mexico. In spite of the intense cold gripping the world, the governing bodies of every other nation are at this moment in extraordinary session determining measures to be taken. Stand by. We will keep you informed. We now return to our regular program. No wonder all communication is shut off. You know, I don't think we could even come down out of our final orbit. I'm afraid you're right, Louis. We are insulated. We are safe in here. Yes, but for how long? I don't know. We're operating now under automatic control. How about the engines, Martel? The engines? The engines are overworked. It's only a matter of time before the turbines give out. To have come so close to success. Yes, this may work. It simply has to. Listen. Our emergency space taxi works on atomic power, right? Right. We must fashion a powerful atom bomb by assembling and uniting a number of bomblets, such as we used on the moon. Two men, drawn by lot, should pilot the taxi over a live volcano. I'm thinking of Popocatepetl, of course. And drop the bomb into the crater. The resultant explosion might thaw the big freeze. Yes, but how will the space taxi crash through the frozen atmosphere? Penetration rocket. As it disperses the micrometeoric clouds, it should break an opening for the space taxi to go through. Yes, it could be piloted through frozen space, but... But we have to inform you that it might disintegrate in the explosion. That's why I said the two men should be drawn by lot, because their chances to return to the lunar year are quite remote. John, it is worth the risk to break up the big freeze, which paralyzes not only the country, but the whole continent. You know as I, this is our duty, our only hope. And gentlemen, it's our only chance 
to accomplish our mission and bring the ship back to Earth. Very well. We'll make the bomb. Careful now, don't drop it. <laughs> there, it's ready. Shall I tell the others it's okay now? Yes, go ahead. What are you doing? I have merely finished it. You disconnected it, you crazy man. But you don't understand. This is our chance. Think, if the North American continent were to remain frozen, your greatest rival would be powerless. I am one with you, don't you see? This way, we control the West, and ultimately the world. What do you mean, we? You are not one of us. I am not only a scientist, I am also a human being, not an insane murderer. You traitor! I betray no one, particularly not myself. I want to live too. <coughs> 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 to sabotage the bomb. Is it all right now? All I have to do is reset the fuse. Good. I am one to go. And I am the other. None of us is free to choose his ancestors or his deeds, good or bad. God bless you all. Till we meet again. This may complete the last portion of our space log as recorded by Dr. David Ruskin. At 0600 Universal Time, a space taxi piloted by Dr. Eric Heinrich and myself will leave the Lunar Eagle to drop atomic bomblets into the crater of the volcano Popocatapetl in an attempt to break the big freeze. This is Dr. Ruskin signing off. Dr. Ruskin to Captain Anderson. Cabin pressure equal. Ready for launch. Penetration rocket.
David. We'll be over the target in one minute and 12 seconds. It's the first time you called me David. I'm sorry you're my partner in this, David. I'd hope that you will carry on my work. You don't think we'll survive this? I don't know. If the bomb works, if we pull out in time. Set the bomb release, David. The bomb's ready. We'll be over the target in 12 seconds. Hold the course. Holding steady. Ready for release. Five. Four. Two. One. Zero. They dropped it, Captain Anderson. I was afraid they wouldn't make it, even though I prayed. John! John, we are caught in the big freeze! Reverse! It's so cold. Switching back to chemical fuel. It's no use, it won't work. The freeze, it's filling the ship. Visibility is almost zero. John, look, look. It echo the same symbol. Will you translate them? Vargas. It echo. Please. Please. It says, now you have seen our strength. But we have seen your human strength and the way your people have sacrificed themselves to save the others. Through those you left behind, we have also learned that 
all your earthy emotions are not evil and warlike. That you have come to us in peace. Your people on Earth have been in suspended animation and have not been harmed. Return to Earth at once. And someday, when you come back, you will be welcome. Lunar Eagle One. Lunar Eagle One. Do you hear me? Captain Anderson, stand by for the director of the ISO. Captain, I have no words to express our feelings that you made it back. Something most unusual has happened to us in the last 16 hours. We cannot explain it. You were lucky to have escaped it all. Prepare for landing.